Let's make the world's most boring spectrophone patch. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm just kidding. And even if I were being absolutely serious, which I am, let's not make the mistake of thinking of boring as a bad thing. Boredom is an important component of a well-rounded life, and it may even occasionally provide space for new ideas to take root, but I digress. In the Spectrophone manual we read, the spectrophone uses real-time analysis and resynthesis to create new sounds from those that already exist. Lost in time to the edit somewhere is another sentence I wrote that didn't make the final cut. It goes like this. Unlike the morphogene and mimeophone, which record, play, repeat, literal reproductions of sounds, the spectrophone synthetically recreates the spectral makeup of sounds. Thus, instead of sounds being replayed, they are reborn as new spectra in an environment where they are cut loose from their origins. Given all this, let's speculate that the most boring thing you could do with a spectrophone is recreate the same sound that is modulating it. Of course, on the most basic level, any recording device can do that. My phone can do that. My phone can do that. Doing it with the spectrophone is a bit of a catch-22. If it succeeds, then we've failed at doing anything interesting. If it does something interesting, then we've failed at succeeding. Let's make a patch. As we've discussed before, the spectrophone is a voltage-controlled oscillator that listens to the sound at the input, then resynthesizes it at its own core frequency. In other words, the output will always have a determinate pitch. And so I'm also going to use a sound with a determinate pitch at the input. In this case, I've loaded up an instance of Native Instruments Contact with a sample bank called The Gentleman, a pleasant, upright piano. I'm playing this instrument I'm playing this instrument using this Arturia Keystep Pro here. Any MIDI controller would do, of course, though this one has a particular advantage in also having CV outputs. This will allow me to control the pitch of this multi-sample piano using MIDI and the VCOs of the spectrophone using control voltage simultaneously. And even more importantly, I can use it to control the value of the slide parameters on the spectrophone. Let's recall that in SAM, Spectral Amplitude Modulation, the slide parameter tells the spectrophone what fundamental to listen for, so to speak. By modulating slide upward as the notes go up, we increase the uniformity of the spectral analysis across the pitch range. Does that make sense? I'm going to mult contacts outputs to the inputs of the morphogene and the spectrophone. I'm sending the key steps CV output to both one volt per octave inputs on the spectrophone. With follow turned off, spectrophones VCOs will output C0 when their pitch knobs are fully counterclockwise, which means they should receive the so-called correct notes from the keyboard CV and therefore match the pitch of the MIDI controlled piano sounds once we adjust the fine tune accordingly. I'm also molting this control voltage to both of the slide inputs. Now, we'll take the odd outputs of the spectrophone into the X-pan channels, and the left and right from the morphogene into the other sides. I've got the sum output, the sum outputs from X-pan onto monitoring. And I'm going to take the sum output from math and use an offset to control the crossfade on both X-pan channels at once.
we can easily quickly balance between the piano sound and the resynthesized spectrophone version. Let's also turn on time lag accumulation on Morphogene to add some layers of piano. We can automate the crossfading between the two sources to some degree by turning on cycling on one of the math channels. And then we can use the channel three and channel four output attenuverters to set the endpoints for this crossfade. Let's also dynamically change the speed of this crossfading cycle. I'll patch the keyboard gate out to clock the Wogglebug and then the Wogglebug smooth CV output to modulate the channel for both input. for a new crossfade cycle rate with each new key press. Note that I have to release all keys at once between presses to create a new gate, otherwise the gate stays high as long as I'm holding at least one key. This could be taken advantage of in the playing technique. I'd like to add a bass line as well. I'm gonna split out the uh, keyboard of the Keystep Pro so that the bottom half sends CV to its uh, channel two output. We'll use the channel two pitch to control the XPO and the gate to fire a maths envelope. Let's patch the sawtooth output through the QPAS here, and I'm gonna take just the right low pass out so that we have just two filter peaks instead of the somewhat easily distorted four that I'd get from the left output. And we'll send the Optimix channel into the aux in on the X fan. The thing that's kind of cool about this is that the XPO will play along with lower piano notes 
Well, the spectrophone plays with higher ones, but if I stop playing the higher notes and send lower notes, the spectrophone will still play. But now with its pitch and slide based on the last high note I played, well, it analyzes the lower note. That gives us a fun avenue for some timbral variety. Starting to suspect that I'm not reaching my goal of making a boring patch here. ever try to totally reinvent the musical wheel by using a highly overpowered tool for a simple task to which it's not very well suited? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy patching.